On the 20th of October 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin captured one of history's most iconic and controversial pieces of film ever. The grainy footage runs for 59 and a half seconds, depicting a lumbering, hairy creature walking out of the wilderness and, at one point, looking directly into the camera. To the fans, it's clear proof of Bigfoot or Sasquatch and is one of the best short films ever. But to many more, it's simply an elaborate hoax. Apparently taken while on horseback, the film was captured in the Six Rivers National Forest, around 25 miles northwest of Orleans in California. And although Roger Patterson maintained the footage was real until his death in 1972, his co-conspirator Bob Gimlin denied involvement in a hoax with Patterson until 2005 when he began giving interviews and appearing at Bigfoot conferences. Regardless, the video sparked a hardcore Bigfoot fan base and inspired a wave of imitators and would-be pranksters. However, unfortunately for one Bigfoot impersonator, his attempt to trick people into thinking they saw Sasquatch would cause him to unceremoniously be Sasquashed. Now a quick recap for those new to the series. The Darwin Award is a satirical prize awarded to those who meet their demise in an especially absurd or reckless manner implying they strengthen the human gene pool by voluntarily removing themselves from it. A tongue-in-cheek play on Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. On the night of Sunday the 26th of August 2012, 44-year-old Randy Lee Tenley of Kalispell in northwest Montana completed an act that saw him exit in one of the most Darwinian ways possible. State trooper Jim Snyder of the Montana Highway Patrol told an ABC News affiliate that Tenley was trying to make people think he was Sasquatch, so they would call and report a sighting. Not in possession of an actual Bigfoot costume, he settled for a ghillie suit made of camouflaged fabric, which evidently in the dark of night made him hard to see. As his mate watched from the side, 38-year-old Randy Lee Tenley strode out like Bigfoot onto US Highway 93. Unfortunately though, in the backdrop of the night sky, an oncoming car failed to see Sasquatch and ploughed straight into him. Although this most likely ended his life, all doubt was cast aside when a second car ran him over moments later. After interviewing the man's friends, police determined that drinks may have been a factor. At around 2am on August the 29th, 2011, 41-year-old chef and business owner Fayez Ahmed Ansari went to his struggling kebab store with a plan to make some money. However, that plan wasn't selling lamb and chicken covered in lettuce, chickpeas and yogurt sauce. He had taken out a £250,000 business interruption policy in the weeks prior. He planned to start a small fire, claim on the insurance and be back up and running in just a few weeks. As the old saying goes, crime never pays. In fact, the only thing Fayez was getting from this endeavour would be the Darwin Award. Assisting Fayez that evening was his 25-year-old roommate and employee Shahbaz Khan. Driving the getaway vehicle was their friend and female accomplice, 25-year-old Mehrwish Yesin. Arriving at Cam's King of the Grill on Narborough Road in Leicester, England, the two men doused the kitchen with three and a half gallons or roughly 14 litres of petrol. Unbeknownst to them, several eyewitnesses had already spotted their dodgy behaviour. At around 2.22am, as Shabaz Khan waited in an alleyway outside, Fayez lit a match to set his shop on fire. However, likely having turned on a gas line too, what was meant to be a small fire became a large explosion. A witness to the blast said a ball of flames blew fragments of metal, rubble, and shards of glass everywhere, and a passing taxi was even hit by shrapnel. Unsure of the fate of their friend, Khan and Yassin hopped in the getaway car and gapped it home. But, according to an article in the Daily Mail, the pair were unceremoniously arrested just 30 minutes later. The fate of the main antagonist, Fayez Ansari, last seen inside the kebab shop right before the explosion remained a mystery. It was the next day that workers clearing the mess discovered the 41-year-old's body lying under the rubble. He wouldn't be getting his insurance money, but on the positive side, he'd put forward a solid case for the Darwin Award. His two accomplices, however, were charged and found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to eight years in prison. During the trial, the pair said it was only meant to be a small fire to justify the insurance claim. Okay, you're the boss. Nice job. 
Oh, he's a big bear. He's a big bear. A very big bear. Wow. Now, it wouldn't be genuine anyway, to say this next story is entirely silly, but it's not without its moments, and it's certainly interesting. So a story worth telling. For 13 consecutive summers, Timothy Treadwell fled his home in California for the wilds of Alaska, setting up camp and living among some of North America's largest and most numerous brown bear populations. He achieved notoriety appearing on CBS's David Letterman show in 2001, promoting his 1997 book, Among Grizzlies, Living with Wild Bears in Alaska. It was clear he was different, likeable, but definitely quirky and pushing his luck to the limit. I'll be one of them. I will be the master. Still a kind warrior. Don't do it. It's okay. I love you. 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 It just came from her butt. This was just inside of her. My girl. Treadwell's years living with the bears was not without controversy. Almost from the start, the National Park Service expressed their concerns about his behaviour. His close photography and video footage often showed him within arm's reach of grizzlies, or getting up close to a mum and her cubs and, at one point, even kissing a bear on the nose. It seemed he genuinely did believe the bears were his friends and that they'd come to accept him I as one of them. I found a way to survive with them. Am I a great person? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we're all great people. Everyone has something in them that's wonderful. I'm just different, and I love these bears enough to do it right. Despite persistent encouragement by the National Park Services to do so, Treadwell refused to install an electric fence around his campsites or carry bear spray to use as a deterrent. However, it would be on his 13th consecutive summer living with the bears that his luck would finally run out. In October of 2003, after an argument with the airline over the price of altering his return ticket to California, Treadwell and his girlfriend, Amy Huguenard, decided to stay an extra week at their campsite in the Katmai National Park on the Alaska Peninsula. This was later in the year than usual, and when the bears attempted to gain as much weight as possible before winter. Food had been scarce that autumn, causing the bears to be more aggressive than usual. On the stormy night of October the 5th, 2003, a large 28-year-old grizzly known as Tagged Bear 141 entered Tim and Amy's camp. A chilling audio from a camcorder left on inside the tent disclosed that Tim was the first to be attacked and dragged into the woods, after which the bear returned for Amy. It was the next day that an air taxi pilot and National Park Rangers found the partial remains of both victims. After being stalked and charged themselves by the same bear, the rangers opened fire and killed it. In the 85-year history of the park, no visitor had ever been killed before by a grizzly. I think the only reason that Treadwell lasted as long in the game as he did was that the bears probably thought there was something wrong with him. This is Angela Nikolau, a Russian rooftopper famous for her selfie poses in awkward and often dangerous places. She even appeared on a Netflix show, Skywalkers, a love story in 2024. She rose to fame in 2015 when involved in a high-profile Russian court case, when her friend and fellow rooftopper painted a prominent Moscow skyscraper in the colors of the Ukraine flag. However, it was around 2014 when her limit-pushing selfies began appearing on the internet right across Russia. And while she is still alive and will hopefully remain so, her risk-taking poses helped inspire a wave of young Russian females to take ever more spectacular and risky self-portraits to outdo each other on social media. In April of that same year, 17-year-old Russian Zina Ignayeva was a month short of her 18th birthday when she attempted her own Angela Nikolaou-style selfie and wound up dead. Train tracks worldwide have become a magnet for youngsters looking for exciting selfies. On an April evening in 2014, Zena and her friend travelled to a railway bridge in St. Petersburg, Russia. Looking for the perfect selfie, she climbed to the bridge top while her friend waited below. According to the St. Petersburg police, 
She was trying to take a dramatic nighttime selfie using the railway line as a backdrop. Reaching the top, holding onto the railing, she pulled out her camera to take the shot. However, after losing balance, she grabbed a high voltage cable and was electrocuted. If the sudden jolt of electricity had not ended her life, the 30 foot drop onto the concrete below certainly had. Now for a shorter honourable mention to finish up with, this next story is what happens when the Darwin Award collides with instant karma in spectacular fashion. Animal lovers and social justice warriors rejoiced in the spring of 2019 when an unlucky rhino poacher died a grisly and unusual death in Kruger National Park. Of the approximately 23,000 rhinos in Africa, around 20,000 live in South Africa and nearly 80% of those reside in Kruger National Park. Needless to say, it's ground zero with around 300 poached each year. In May of 2019, a rather noteworthy poaching incident took place when five armed men snuck into Kruger National Park. According to a BBC article, their plan was to shoot a rhino, cut off its horn, and sell it on the black market. However, things didn't go to plan. Shortly after entering the park, before they could get their hands on any rhino horn, a herd of elephants charged the men, and although four of them escaped, one of them got trampled. For context, an adult elephant weighs between two and seven tonnes. It would be a full three days after the incident that officials found nothing more than a skull and a pair of trousers. While being trampled likely killed him, it was the lions that got to him in the end. Kruger National Park's managing executive, Glenn Phillips, expressed his condolences to the victim's family in an unprecedented move. That said, his response was far different than those posted on social media by irate animal lovers. They mostly said things like, it's a shame all five didn't die, I hope the lions had seconds and they deserved it. That's all the stories for today and if you know a Darwinian tale you think needs telling, let me know in the comments and it may make a future one. If you enjoyed today's video I'd love it if you subscribed and joined me for the next one. To watch another of my Darwin Award videos, you can click the link on screen. And as always, thanks for watching.